Imagine, an investing app that provides commission-free trades, allows you to open an account with no minimum account requirement, and gives you free stocks when you sign up. Yes, today I'm talking about how to use the Weibo investing app for beginners. Now see, as a beginner, I don't know about you, but when I got started, I was like, whoa, there's a lot of graphs, there's a lot of research tools, where do I begin? And see, when I actually began three years ago with the Weibo app, I had a measly old $88. And now today I grew that over $29,000. So today I wanna help you get set up in your account take you step by step so you can be successful with your investment journey. Now, while I'll give you all the details on how to set the app up, everything from stocks to ETFs to crypto is not financial advice. What I buy is not what I'm recommending that you buy, hold, or sell. Right over here is what we're gonna review in today's video. The best part is to save you time, there are chapters down below throughout this video. You can hop over to whatever chapter you're looking for. So if you don't wanna know about signing up but you wanna hop over to how to buy a stock, Go to the chapters and that'll take you through whatever you're looking for. Cause you know, I like saving you time. And if you appreciate that, all I ask, drop me a like on this video. Let's get right to it with step number one. And step number one is hop over to the app store and download the Weibo investing app. There is a link down in the description below that when you sign up with my link, you'll get free stocks for signing up. Now, sometimes that promotion can be two stocks all the way up to 12 stocks and more. So make sure you check it out to see what the latest promotion is for you. Now, first and foremost, this is not not just in the United States. There are actually a few countries that Weibo has expanded to. They include areas such as Hong Kong, Singapore, Japan, and Australia. And good news, Weibo has actually just launched in the United Kingdom as well. Now, if there are any other countries that Weibo expanded to after I posted this video, I will update that in the pinned comment below. So once you get the app downloaded and considering that you live in one of the countries that they service, the first thing that you're gonna see is open an account. And when you open that account, here's what you're gonna see. You're gonna fill in your basic information, name, address, all that good stuff. But there are two things that typically trip people up. The very first one is that people wonder, hey, why do I have to scan in my ID, like your driver's license or your country ID or whatever, some type of self-identification? Why do I have to do that? They need to make sure you are not a scammer. Got to make sure that you are actually you. And that's why they go through that particular piece in the sign-up process. Number two, and this one trips up people a lot, is a social security number or some type of other country ID number depending on where you live. Now, with the social security number, that is a big one because people say, why do I have to do that? But that's actually a tax reporting reason. That's required because they have to report anytime that you sell a stock, anytime that you make money as a result of your investments, they have to report that to the IRS, as do you for tax reporting purposes. In order to do that, they need your social security number. So as we go through the next couple chapters, I'm gonna pop up my phone right here and record it live. And I'm also gonna be doing in real time, buying and selling stocks. So all of this is not simulated. You're actually gonna see how to do this step by step. Now, when you open the app and you're fully approved, you're signed up, you're a Weibo customer, this is likely what it'll look like. You can actually adjust all this and I'll share how to do that a little bit later in the video. But let's talk about the free stock. So when you sign up and you get the free stocks, the first thing you're going to want to do is hop over to where it says menu right here on the bottom right hand side. So tap on that and then you're going to be looking for something up here under the promotion center. It'll say something like free stocks and also the shortcut where it says my rewards will also light up that indicates that your stocks are ready for you. So hop over there, check out what you got. It could be any type of stock. Some people get shares of Apple. Some people get shares of newer companies. It all depends what you get. So hopping back to my home screen, which is my watch list, let's talk about number one, which is how do I actually transfer money in to Weeble? See, you may have a checking account. You may have some type of bank account with money in it. Well, you need to transfer your money in in order to start investing. Now, of course, you could always just sign up get the free stocks and watch those stocks grow, fall, whatever. You could just do that if you wanted to. Or if you wanna actually continue investing and grow your portfolio like I have, then you're gonna to wanna to transfer some money in and start your investing process. And it doesn't matter how much it is, it's whatever works best for you. Some of you may be familiar with my $5 a day challenge. Not only will I show you how to do that a little bit later in the video, but also that's a great way to transfer just a little bit of money into an investing app like Weeble and get started the right way. So to transfer money into Weeble, at the bottom, you're gonna see the little Weeble logo right in the center of the screen. Do you see that? Tap on that, that's gonna take you over to your portfolio. This is what mine looks like today. Then what we're gonna do at the top bar, you can see all these different things on the top bar. You're gonna tap on where it says transfers. 
And then you have some options. You can deposit, you can withdraw, you can also transfer assets in and out of Webull. That means, let's say you have an investing app like Robinhood, Public, Schwab, whatever, you could actually say, you know what, I'm done with that account. I wanna transfer all my shares of stock from that point over into Webull. And that's what those two at the bottom are all about. But in this case, we're gonna deposit money. So the very first option is deposit, tap on that. You can do ACH, which is what I recommend, or you could do wire transfer. Now ACH has $0 fee, very easy to use. All you have to do is link now, and you can do a real-time verification, or you can do a micro deposit verification. I recommend real-time verification. And what you're gonna do is select whatever bank you're using, your financial institution. You're gonna log in with that account. That way they know it's actually you and it's your account. And then from that point, you can then start depositing money in. We're gonna select our bank, whatever that bank is. You can see if it's not listed on this list, you can come up here and type it in. At that point, it's gonna hop you over to your bank's app and you're gonna to have to log in. Now I'm gonna hide that because I don't want anybody logging into my bank account I, I, for obvious reasons. Then you're gonna see something like this. And the best part is, is once you've set up that little piece that I just showed you, you're never gonna have to do that again. Once your bank is linked, your bank is linked. So anytime that you need to further deposit, you can do that. I typically like to do like maybe once every month, I'll transfer in about $100. But for this case, for this example, I'm not gonna do that much. I'm only gonna transfer in $10. Now you can see the daily maximum is $50,000. For some of you big rollers out there, if you're transferring $50,000 in, hey, let's get a beer sometime. But here we go, $10 coming from my bank via ACH. I'm gonna hit deposit, and then I'm gonna hit I understand. Please make sure you have enough money in your bank account so the check doesn't bounce, in other words. I have definitely $10 in my checking account. I'm gonna hit confirm. And it's simple as that. It's gonna load and immediately be ready to start the initiation of the deposit. Now, there are a couple days that it takes to go from your bank account into Webull, especially if it's a holiday or a weekend. It's gonna to have to go through that weekend, through that holiday, and then eventually transfer over. But you don't actually have to wait because what they do is they provide you provisional credit. And that means if you transfer $10 in or $100 in, you can start using that money. It's provisional, they're giving it to you on a good faith, then you can start using it right away. You don't have to wait in this case. I'd have to wait quite a few days actually, almost a week for this to transfer in. You can see deposit completed estimate is 95 and the date that I'm recording this is 8.30, so that's a little bit of time. If I hop back to my asset screen, you can see cash balance is now at 155 because I originally had $145 already in there. So because I transferred that additional $10, you can see it right there, ready to go. Now, how do you take money out? Let's say you've sold some stocks. Now keep in mind, if this is a taxable account, which is what this is, when you have profit, what I mean by that, do you see all the green numbers here? Things are looking good in my account as of the recording of this video. Open P&L means how much you've made over time. My portfolio is up 13.62% or $3,575. What's that mean? What that means is that as I bought stocks, as I bought shares of companies, etc., that value has risen up over time. It's grown over time up 13%. So what I could do is sell some of these stocks. You see down here, for example, I have 32 shares of Apple. I could sell all 32 shares, have $6,000 sitting in my account, and then transfer that to my checking account so I can go meet you at the bar and we'll have a beer or whatever. But just keep in mind that that growth right there, that $1,058, because I have a taxable account, that would actually be something I need to pay taxes on. To avoid that, you just don't sell until you absolutely have to. But in this case, let's talk about withdrawing. Now you can see my settled cash right here on my portfolio was $145. That's what I would be allowed to withdraw in this case. The same thing that we did for deposits, we'll do for withdrawals. The very top of the screen on the homepage, you're gonna click on where it says transfers. Now you can see right there, it actually says available to withdraw $145, just like we saw. So I can tap on that. And then I'm going to click the button right down here that says withdraw. ACH, again, I recommend that so you don't have to deal with fees. Look at the fees for the wire transfer. If it's domestic, it's 25. If it's international, it's 45. Nobody wants to pay extra money for your money. Do it for free with the ACH. Tap on that. And then you can withdraw whatever amount you want to up to the available withdrawal limit. So because I have $145 in cash, I can withdraw all $145. I would hit withdraw. 
I'd hit confirm. And then what I have found, I'm not gonna actually go to withdraw this money, by the way. So sorry, I'm not gonna actually go through with this. What I did on my past withdrawals is I'd see usually about a day or no more than two or three days that it would get into my checking account. Quite frankly, if it's not a weekend, if I did this on like a Monday, it typically shows up in my bank account the next day. Now that does depend on your personal banking account. Some personal banks take a little bit longer to transfer the money in once Webull sends it. But for mine, they do a great job and I typically can see that money the next day. Now that we've talked about how to transfer money in, transfer money out, and we talked about, as you can see right here, the total incoming deposit of $10 gives me instant buying power before the funds are actually moved from the bank account into Webull. So we can start using that if we want to. But we're gonna do a couple things when it comes down to buying stocks. We're just gonna buy a stock and then we're also gonna talk about recurring investments. Both of those are really cool things to think about. So let's come over to our asset screen. And here you can see a couple things, not only your portfolio, but all of the different stocks that you have purchased over your time trading with Webull. Now remember, everything I show you here today is not financial advice to buy, hold, or sell any of these properties. You may actually remember on a prior video where I was talking about the banking collapse, and I decided to go in on a couple ETFs that service banks, and uh, as you can see as of the recording of this video, a lot of them are doing quite well. But let's say you either wanna buy an additional share of one of these things that you already purchased, or you wanna buy a new one. So let's start first with let's buy one that we already have. Let's say we wanna buy some more Apple. We can actually tap right on Apple and right down at the bottom, you'll see it says buy. We can click on buy and then there's a couple things you can do. First of all, don't worry so much about all of the different order books and stuff like that. That can be a little bit overwhelming for beginners. And again, this video is tailored for beginners only. So in this case, we're just kind of buying and holding. We're taking the easy road. We're not day trading. We're not going crazy. We're not going wild. We just want to buy some shares of Apple. And then we're going to hold it for like five, 10 years and see it grow to the moon. That's the goal. So in this case, there's a couple things I can do. Order type is limit. That means if the price is at $187.73 or lower, go ahead and buy however many shares I end up putting in here, right there where it says quantity. You can also click on this and select market. And I usually just do market because that's the easiest way for a beginner. If you're a little bit more advanced, you can do limit trades. It does sometimes save you money as far as if it's a volatile stock going up and down very quickly. That way you can take advantage of the best price. But for the purpose of simplicity, we'll do market today. Now there's a couple things I can do. I can buy a full share, which up here at the top, do you see how it says 187.64? As of the recording of this video, that is the price of Apple. So one share right there, one share is $187. So let's say for example, and actually in my case, I don't have $187 to trade. Remember, I only have $155 of buying power. So what I can do with Webull is I can buy a fractional share. And that means I can put as little as $5 into this particular stock. All you have to do is where it says amount and share, tap on where it says share, and then you'll see it changes to USD. In my case, I'm using the United States dollar. And now I can say, I wanna only buy $5, $10, $15 worth of Apple, whatever that may be. For the example of today's video, I'm gonna say $5 in fractional shares of Apple. Now look at the difference. My $5 will give me 0.02666 shares of Apple. Not a whole lot, but remember, as Apple grows and as Apple falls, your $5 will maybe become $5.10, $5.50, or $4.50. It all depends on what Apple is doing based on your average cost. The buying power, of course, is the same and there is no transaction fee. That's what's beautiful about Webull. There are no transaction fees, commission-free trades. Makes it easy so you don't have to pay extra money just to simply execute a trade. So let's buy $5 worth of Apple. What do you say? All I gotta do is come down to the very bottom where it says buy, tap the button. It'll pop up with a confirmation screen just to say, hey, you're buying fractional shares of $5 at the market price and we're gonna make this happen during normal trading hours. Sounds good to me. Hit confirm. It'll say that sounds great, and I'm gonna hit done. Now check it out, 8.30, I bought $5 worth of Apple, there's my confirmation, and everything's good to go. I now own 32.05558 shares of Apple now. Now we looked at that part of the buying the stocks, let's talk a little bit deeper about how to buy something that you don't already have in your portfolio. So let's say for example, you wanna buy a brand new stock. The best way to do that is go to the bottom and go to watch list. At the very top of the watch list, you'll see a magnifying glass. We're gonna tap on that, and then you're gonna search for whatever you're interested in. It could be an ETF, which means it's a 
fund that holds many different stocks and it tracks an index, or you could go with an individual company that you're passionate about, but always do your own research and make sure you don't just follow somebody's blind advice. This is your life you're playing with. Make sure you do it smartly. Because everybody knows about Tesla, I'm gonna type in TSLA because that one is certainly a hot stock. We're gonna click on that and here we go. So right now going for $258 a share as of the recording of this video. So let's say I'm passionate about Tesla and I wanna go ahead and do the Tesla thing. You can just go down to the bottom to where it says trade and that's how you buy your share of stock that you don't already own in your portfolio. So we're gonna tap on trade and then you can do the same thing you did earlier. You can buy one share, two share, three share. It all depends down here, of course, on your buying power. So in this case, I don't have enough buying power. My estimated total is 775 bucks. Buying power is only 150, so I need to probably buy a fractional share. So as always, we come up here to where it says share. We're gonna tap on that, and I'm gonna buy another $5. There's something about me and $5, it's just easy. So $5 into Tesla. I'm gonna have 0 0.01935 shares of Tesla, and I'm gonna hit buy just like we did earlier. And now we're the proud owner of Tesla. So if we go back into the portfolio, what we're gonna now notice is that we own a little bit of Tesla. So notice a couple things first at the top. Cash balance is now down to $145 because we spent $5 for Apple and another $5 for Tesla. We come down here to the bottom, check it out, there it sits. Tesla, right now it's not really doing much of anything. It might be down just a slight amount by 0.04%. But again, the goal here, I'm gonna leave it ride over a long period of time. Now, for those of you who follow me for that $5 a day, back in January of 2022, I decided to put $5 a day into the S&P 500 index. And we've been tracking that from January of 2022 until just recently, so well over a year. And I'm actually gonna be continuing this process for like 10 years. So I'm gonna come back with a video in 10 years and we're gonna see how that grows. You can do that with Webull. You can invest $5 into whatever ETF, whatever stock, whatever company you want, and here's how you do that. Now, it's kind of easy right now, which is interesting because on my home screen, it popped up with this nice, friendly little recurring investment thing. But just in case that's not there for you, we gotta figure out how to get there. So if you don't see the banner, here's what we're gonna do. Come over to the watch list, and I'm gonna just do Tesla again because, eh, why not? So T-S-L-A in the search bar. We're gonna click on that. Now, here we are back on the Tesla screen, $258 a share, whatever. What we wanna do, especially if this banner still right here does not exist, because I know in the future, this isn't always gonna be there. So it's important that we kind of take a look at that and you know, figure out how to do this the other way. So you don't wanna actually hit trade. We don't wanna hit options. You wanna go all the way to the right where the three little dots are. Tap on the three little dots. Then what you're gonna see is recurring investment. Tap on that. And then as you see, a minimum of $5. Now, there's a couple things that I recommend that we think about here if you're gonna engage in the $5 a day investing challenge. Sure, we can do $5, we can do $10, whatever per day, but what we wanna make sure of is the payment method. Right now, it's gonna go on my Webull buying power. That's great, I have $145 in there. But once that gets down to a lower amount, it's gonna do one of two things. It's either gonna stop buying your reoccurring investment, which is not what we want, or it's gonna actually start pulling from your checking account, your linked bank account. And I definitely don't want that. I don't know about you, but I don't wanna to have to go in and reconcile my checking account with every little $5 charge every single day. Best way to do that is hop back to where we talked about depositing money into Webull, and then just transfer in 100, 200, $300 a month just to satisfy whatever your recurring investment is. That way it can pull directly out of your buying power and you don't have to worry about anything. What we're gonna do is we're gonna click on frequency every trading day. And of course you have other options. You can do every two weeks, every month, every week. This doesn't mean that we have to do it every single day. It's just, I'm kind of branding it with what we talked about here on the channel. So we're gonna do $5 a day. And it's really as simple as that. We're then gonna hit next. We're gonna hit confirm. And there we go. What's cool is over time, you'll be able to go back and look at your reporting to see how much it's grown, how much you've invested in with these $5 every day. It's really, really useful. And I think Webull does a great job with reporting. Now let's talk about selling a share of stock. So if you're ready and you're like, you know what, I need to sell this. So I do wanna warn you, especially for beginners, that sometimes we sell things because we wanna cut our losses. And I wanna warn you about that because sometimes we get so excited where almost like investing becomes a little bit like gambling. And you're like, oh, you know what? 
my, the roulette table, it didn't hit black like I wanted it to. It hit red. So I'm just going to cash out of the table or, hey, my poker chips, they're not falling where I need them to. Don't worry about that stuff. The goal here, especially on this channel, is long-term financial independence. And in order to do that, we literally buy and hold. But if the case is that you have some profitability or you're in a period of financial independence and you're now withdrawing on your portfolio to live your life, then it's all good. But there's a couple things you need to know, and we'll talk about that in just a second. So here on Webull, we're going to hop over to the center screen as always, our main portfolio. And then down here at the bottom, I'm actually going to sell this one share of Disney that I just purchased as an example so I can sell it and show you how to do this. But a couple things we need to know. Number one, when you sell this in a taxable brokerage account, as I mentioned earlier, you may owe taxes. So be very aware of that. Talk to your tax guy. Make sure you got everything squared away. Because if you have a lot of profit, in the case of Apple, I have over $1,000 worth of profit. That might be a heavy tax bill, especially if it bumps me into the next tax bracket. So if you're worried about that, check with your tax guy. Just make sure everything's good. So now it's going negative, so I might lose a couple pennies doing this, but whatever, it's all good. I'm just sharing with you how to do this. So let's say in your existing portfolio, these are all, your, all the positions that I own, I wanna sell that one share of Disney. I'm gonna click on it. And then right here, it says at the bottom, sell to close. Tap on that. And then I'm going to hit sell to close once again. I am going to either do limit on the order type or market. For this example, I'll do market. But just to explain what limit means again, when it comes down to selling versus buying, is that we want to make sure that we sell on a limit of $84.24 or higher. So in this case, we don't want the, like if the price is going down, 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 we don't want a limit price that's going to sell at an even deeper loss. We want to make sure that limit is, hey, if this stock is going up and down crazy today, I only want to sell it if I'm in the green. So don't sell it if it goes crashing down. That's the helpful thing about limit. The other thing with market is it's going to sell it whatever the price is as soon as we hit the sell button. So again, if you have a volatile stock, just be careful about that. So in this case, I'm going to sell my entire one share. I'm going to get roughly about $84.19 back and uh, cool, all good. I am taking a little bit of a loss. As you can see here, the cost basis is down 84.25. Okay, I'm going to hit the sell button. There's my confirmation. Hit confirm again. And just like that, we sold a share of stock. If we come back here to the portfolio, you'll notice Disney is no longer showing up where it did right under Apple. And I have some of my money back, but there's an important thing to keep a note on. Notice now that it says unsettled cash of 84.18 and settled cash of 51.73. This one trips people up a lot. In any investing world, there is something called T plus two. So once you sell something, it does take two days, and this is like a regulation, to come back into your account. So you're gonna have to be patient. If you're operating where you need that money immediately, really I recommend that you don't invest in the first place. Make sure you get your budget in order, make sure you get your finances in order before you start investing. Because if you're at that desperate point that you need this money ASAP, you're gonna have to wait that T plus two. Oh, and if it's a weekend or a holiday, it might be like four days or five days from now. So you're gonna have to wait for that unsettled cash to go back into settled cash in order to withdraw it back into your checking account or in order to then take it and invest it into a different stock. So just be careful and be aware of that. By the way, if you have any questions and you need a little bit more information based on what I'm sharing in today's video, I know it's long, drop me a comment down below and I'll do my best to make sure I reply to each and every one of your questions. So now that we talked a little bit about cash and unsettled cash and all that stuff, I do wanna to touch on something really important when you sign up for Webull. And that is the difference between a margin account and a cash account. What you're seeing here today is a cash account. I can only basically buy stocks, buy investments with the cash that I have personally transferred in to this particular app. So if I don't have the cash, I don't get to invest. I'm gonna to have to deposit more money in. But in the past, I had a margin account. And here's what that margin account looked like. You're gonna see things like day trade, BP, things like that. Now BP stands for buying power. What that means is up and beyond the cash that you have available to invest, you're basically taking out a loan from Webull. That's what margin means. You're taking out a loan to buy stocks and buy investments. The key thing to know, especially as a beginner, is be very, very careful about trading on margin. Let me give you a great example. Let's say there's a day that one of your favorite stocks is going absolutely to the moon. So you decide, you know what? I have a significant amount of money in this day trade BP. 
why don't I go ahead and take out this loan? And the hope is, as it goes up to the moon, I'm going to profit. I'll sell it, pay back the loan, pay back the margin, and keep all the profit. Then what you do is you buy it, you, you use all that BP, and then all of a sudden the stock turns on you and starts crashing like a beast. Now you're kind of stuck. You might get what they call an equity margin call. Now what you got to do is either sell your other positions, deposit money, and possibly pay some additional fines as a result of basically now owing more than you took out on the loan. If all this sounds confusing and scary, sign up for a cash account. It'll make your life so much easier. You'll avoid all the mess of potentially things going south and you owing money to Weeble. If you have a cash account, you don't have to worry about that at all. But if you have a margin account and you dip into more than your cash reserves, you could find yourself into big trouble. The other thing to keep in note is if you do use margin and you hold your positions overnight, so if you're basically buying and holding with a loan from Weeble, they charge you interest and it's a lot of money. As of the recording of this video, right here are the current percentages of interest that they charge when you hold a position. So just calculate that. Let's say you buy $10,000 worth of a stock or $100,000 worth of a stock. If you're holding that for a long period of time, you're going to owe Weeble interest. Really important things to keep in mind. And it's not just Weeble. Any investment platform does this. But when you're a beginner, I recommend a cash account. Let's talk really quick about how to customize your Weeble app. Because you may not like what you see here today. I know a lot of you don't like the light theme. You like the dark theme when it comes down to your investment apps. And I got you. I'm going to show you how to do that. At the bottom, very bottom, right hand side, we're going to go back to the menu. Tap on the menu. And then under shortcuts, it's going to say settings. Tap on settings. Now, here's what I recommend that we do. We come down here to where it says theme, kind of halfway, almost a little bit more than halfway down the page. Tap on theme. And then you can decide to change it to dark, black, whatever you'd like. I'm going to leave it on bright. Don't judge me. But this is how you can fix that. Navigation settings is the next thing I want to share with you, and that's right above the theme. Navigation is what we were looking at earlier. Do you see? There's our bottom bar that we were looking through as we went through this video. Watch list markets, your main portfolio, feeds, and menu. You can change this. You can see right here at the bottom, it says edit the page layout. You can move markets up here above the watch list if you'd want. You can have feeds above that if you want. What I like is I like it set up how I had it, which is watch list, markets, and then feeds. The other thing that I actually recommend, and actually, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and change this here right now, is when you open up the Weeble account, where's it going to land? Right now, you can see it's checkmarked that it's going to land on the market screen, but I don't really like that. I would like for Weeble to open up straight away on my account so I can see how I'm doing. So I'm going to tap on that, and right there's my account. Simple and easy as that. So we talked about fractional shares, recurring investments, all these things, margin account, cash account, all that stuff. We might also want to talk about how to do this if you're truly a beginner. And let's say you get your free stocks. You sign up for Weeble, you got your free stocks, and that's what's your account. You're chilling. You're cool. But you want to play around with it, but you're a little bit worried about actually doing it with your real money. You can do it with paper trading. Let me show you how that works. Come back over to the menu as we always do, bottom right hand side, and then where you see the shortcuts, click on more at the bottom right hand side of that. We're going to tap on more, and then you're going to look for the option that says paper trading. So under trading, you see it's kind of uh, middle, near the right, paper trade, tap on that, and here's what's awesome. You can see I now have $100,000, but I can, I'm actually going to ask the top right hand side, I'm going to hit reset. And then you can uh, look at that. You can say, I'm going to trade with a million dollars. Confirm. Confirm. Boom. I just got a million dollars of play money. And here's what's really cool about it. You can play around with this and see, okay, if I trade like this, if I do this over here, if I do that over there, am I going to get screwed or am I going to make a lot of money? Now, of course, the sad thing is, is if you make a lot of money, you're not actually going to make that money, but at least you can try out your investment skills to see if you're any good at it or not. So that's the point of this whole thing. What I like though, is that we can come in here and we can click on trade. And let's say, hey, there's one, Google. We're going to click on Google. A couple things we can do here. First of all, and this does apply to the actual cash account that you use, you can do a lot of different research as well. You can see monthly, yearly, how your individual stock is actually growing or falling. We can click on news right here on the third option in. We can do news and we can scroll through it all and see all these cool different things about what's happening with your particular stock. 
you want to see what what's happening with Google, like what's in the news. Everything is provided in the latest information right here for you in Weeble, both in the paper trade as well as just in your general watch list that we looked at earlier. Feeds is an interesting place. Um, don't get too caught up in feeds because sometimes you get a lot of people that think they know what they're talking about, trying to give you financial advice in the feeds. So it's basically like a social media type of environment when it comes down to a particular stock. You can see Google right now is number 63 in the popularity list. If we click on that, I'm sure Tesla is probably number one. Um, actually, no, AMC looks like it's number one. Tesla is number three. And right now, Mullen Automotive is number two. Whatever. You can look at analysis to see what actually the stock brokers and some of the trading professionals are rating this stock. Right now, based on 12 analysts, you can see 42% say that Google is a strong buy, 50% say it's a buy, and 8% say it's a hold. So not too bad. You can also see what their analyst price target is. Remember, they're analysts. They're not actually experts in the standpoint of they don't know what actually is going to happen with the stock. At the end of the day, nobody knows. But their, their price target here at a maximum is $160 a share. We can see right here at the top, it's going for $136. So that would be favorable if it went from $136 to $160. But um, the average point is right around $142, which is still good. That is still above our $136 if we buy today. So going back here, now that we did all of our research, let's paper trade some Google. So we're gonna hit paper trade and you can have some fun with this. So I'm gonna go on market and you can buy as many shares as you want if you got a $1 million portfolio in paper trading. I could do like 5,000 shares, I think, right, of Google. Look at that, 5,000 shares will only cost me a mere $681,000. I'm gonna hit paper trade and now watch what happens. It makes it look like you bought it, but you actually didn't, you're just paper trading. But if we go back to our paper trade account, now look what happened. So already I'm up $50. So Google already rose up enough to get me an additional $50 of growth. But 681,000 is what I bought. And we'll see what our 5,000 shares do over the long period of time. So because there's so much other advanced features such as shorting stocks, margin, options, and things like that, which I do have some more advanced videos here on the channel if you wanna check them out. But the cool thing is, is this app will grow with you. Here we're a beginner, but as we get more skilled and maybe you want to grow your investment career, Weibo allows you to do that. You don't get stopped. There's no like ceiling on this where you're like, oh man, in order to do this special thing, I now have to find another brokerage. No, Weibo will grow with you. And that's what I like so much. So pick up your free stocks. Link down in the description below. If you enjoyed the video, like it, check out this video next, and we'll see you on the next video.